good thing back there. I won't dwell on the matter. I know that's not a sentiment you're accustomed to reveling in, but rest assured, your actions have spoken for themselves. Need something? Oh, darling, I'm hurt. I thought we had something special. I guess I'll spend my evenings lounging here while you do all the hard work. It sounds awful. How can I help? With pleasure. Lead on. Ah, excellent choice. It shall be done. Fate, dost thou require a new as the... Dull moment. Shouldn't have wished to live in more interesting times. Very well. They say that the only thing a vampire can feel is hunger. Nothing else touches them. Not grief or mercy. Or any sense of what is just. Who knows? And there is often more ignorance than insight in what they say. You're sure? Later then. I tell you not to get in trouble. But I suspect it will find you whether you like it or not. Always at your side. A welcome face. How can I help? Chuck, you believe you can survive without me? As you say, do not keep me waiting. So Astarian didn't fulfill his master's ambitions for himself. At least that means he's his own man. Though, I'm a little surprised he didn't covet those powers. All right, some company wouldn't hurt on the road. Especially if there's trouble. <sighs> we 
you'd hate to hear me say this, but I'm so fucking proud of Astarian. He could have had it all, but he kept his soul instead. I wasn't sure he had it in him, but he's changed so much. Overcome so much darkness. Oh, I could smooch that pointy little face. What's on your mind? Fuck yes. ahead. Never wanted the easy path.
Seek and you shall find me. There is work to do.
All's well that ends is not as bad as it could have. Lies before me. You must be surrendered. Interference with flaming fist property will be dealt with swiftly and hard. Mistress likeness. It's been some time since I stood before her in a place like this. There she stands, just as Elminster promised. Mistra, goddess of the weave, mother of all magic. The old man wasn't lying. She's opened the summoning channel. Can't you feel it? Gail's right. The very air around the statue crackles with magic, as though the weave itself were coursing beneath her stony skin. A stream of pure, undiluted weave. I only have to reach out, and it will carry me to Mistra, wherever she may be. An audience with your goddess can go wrong. I should know. But do whatever you feel is best, Gale. Time was, I'd have given my right arm for a chance to speak with Mistra again. <laughs> the left one, too. Maybe a knee. Am I? You're right. I am a strong, capable wizard. And this is no more than a casual reunion with an ex-lover. My omnipotent, omniscient ex-lover. I always wonder what being nervous would feel like. I hate it. During my time locked away in Waterdeep, I prepared a quite comprehensive speech for her on the subject of our former relationship and the manner in which it ended. Alas, recent events have rendered the majority of it moot, so I'm gonna have to improvise. Unless you have any words of wisdom to impart before I go. You'd make a fine three-dragon anti-player, you know? 
I think it's best I keep a cool head going into this. Approach it like a particularly high-risk round of three dragon ante. I'll let Mistress show her flight, and then I can see how strong a chance we stand of winning the gambit. I'll only be gone for a matter of moments. The Outer Plains experience time quite differently to our own. Wait for me. Please. to you. But I assume we're not here solely to exchange compliments. So why am I here? You discovered what lies at the heart of the Absolute, the Crown of Causes. And you disobeyed my instruction. Why? Because you had no right to ask that of me. You cast me out. Remember? You were my lover. My chosen. Yet still you know so little of me. The past cannot be undone with self-pity, nor can a future be forged. Only with the truth will you see the way ahead. The fragment of magic you tried to return to me was not of my creation. It was the Carsite Weave. It is a corrupted, half-born magic, wrought in the brief moment Carsus ascended to godhood. It hungers for power, just as he did, and it can never be sated. You unleashed something that would consume all magic in existence, and yet you thought only of preserving yourself. So that's what you're scared of. With the crown of Carsus reforged, I could take control of the Carsite Weave. You can no more control the Carsite Weave than a weather vane could control a storm. That it entered your body and consumed no more than your powers was a miracle. But we will not be granted another. The only reason the orb sleeps is because I have allowed it to feed on the true weave. A temporary measure, but one that will not be enough to save us. With each day that passes, the Elder Brain threatens to become a new kind of god. Its worshippers, a scourge of soulless illithids. If you will not use the orb to end this abomination, then you must find a way to separate crown and host. When you've done this, you must surrender the crown of Carsis to me. A great ask indeed. You've given me much to think on, as you always did. So be it. Follow the needle of your own wisdom. We shall see how truly it leads you. soil once more. I can't believe I saw it. After all this time. <sighs> Relieved. Drained. Proud of myself for summoning the courage to go to her in the first place. And, if I'm being totally honest, a bit lightheaded. As if it wasn't enough to have seen her again. She didn't exactly summon me there for small talk. The Carsite Weave. Within me this whole time. I knew the orb was no ordinary ball of magic before it to be Carsus's malignant creation. Gods! How did I not see that? But I should have known. What right had I to go about declaring myself an archmage when I was as foolish as a 
common apprentice in setting such an entity loose. At least now I'm armed with the truth. And Mistress' expectations. It sounds like the door to redemption is open at last. All I have to do is walk through it, carrying the crown of Carsus. Perhaps I see few other options open to me. If I ever want to reclaim those parts of myself, the orb snatched away. If I ever want to be me again. <laughs> I'll have to disagree with you there. Having not one, but two parasitic entities within your body does very little for one's faith in one's personality. Still, I should take the compliment with the same generosity it was given, so... Thank you. If I could promise you one thing in return for your faith in me, it's this. I will use everything in my power to ensure we defeat this evil. I will not let you down. Now... I believe we have a date with an elder brain to get to. Shall we? Something's on my mind. Hi, you already got paid. No more work here. Plenty of rats elsewhere in the city. Go kill those. Rats, murderers. Always knew the chef gig wasn't going to be easy. Do not worry. Chef Revere's eyes will be kept peeled for murdering types. Found anything? God, that's it. Proof that I was right. I'll tell you what I know. A century ago, there was a man, Saravok Anchev. He was a child of the god of murder, Baal. He ruled the Iron Throne, a dark tower hiding a darker secret. It was the front for a deadly arms dealing network. There, Saravok amassed an army and sought to become a god. Under his stewardship, the Baal temple was revived. And with it, the Baal cult itself. Fortunately, the temple was destroyed. And to cleanse the city of Saravok's memory, the Iron Throne was torn from its foundations and cast into the Chionthal. For most, that was the end of it. But cults like that don't disappear overnight. That list you spoke of confirms I'm right. The Baal cult is back. And someone is out there, continuing Saravok's work. I've not ruled out the possibility that it is Saravok himself. The brutality of the killings is certainly reminiscent of his work. But there's something more here. Something new. 
There's a reference to these murders. A certain flair. It's as if they were done in worship. The precision of the cuts. The depth, the execution. The best butchers in Room couldn't make a cut like that. Trust me, I've asked them. I've done everything I can within the remit of my job. Any more and they'll fire me. But you... You're not bound by such constraints. Oh, help me out here. Help the city out. I bet if you follow the trail of these murders, you will be able to unearth the truth of this resurgence. There are patriarchs on the murder target list. I'm oath-bound to secure them first, so I'll be heading to the upper city next. While I'm there, the other potential victims will be at risk. Could you warn them? Not from round here, are you? We're in Boulder's Gate. This is just how things work. Thank you. That's all I can ask, and more than I hoped. Once I'm done with the Patriarchs, I'll head to Basilisk Gate to have another go at convincing my superiors to put some resources into this matter. Meet me there if you've anything more to report. And good luck. Chef Revere has been staying most vigilant since your warning, yes. Only murders in this kitchen will be of the rat kind. Concerned, Lord Gortash gets the benefit of the doubt. Until he does something obviously wrong, he's got my support. We can't afford to be squabbling with the absolute crawling up our asses. What can I get you? Make it as easy as possible and leave a big tip. Thanks. Enjoy. In my opinion, we should have a still watch in every Bulgarian home. Why? I'm glad you asked. It should certainly help with the dishes. Hello there. We were just about to try some of Master Metzli's delightful wines. Oh, would you care to join us? Mm, they do look ever so tasty. Ah, Mrs. Highbury. I prefer to conduct tastings individually, so I may assess your palate. Call me Cora, Master Metzli. And I'm afraid I must insist on their joining us. 
Wine's no good without company, after all. No. I must say, if this is a practical joke, it's not very amusing. Why, a serial killer? Oh, that's terrible. Master Mensley, are you quite all right? It was perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. You have solid it with knowledge, made it an unclean sacrifice. I will remember your face. And I will peel it from your skull, should you interfere again.
to slow down and learn to enjoy life.